same theory. We are still the same kids. The chocolates are the same things. Again, um, welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about the topic shame trap. Uh, thank you for Pilar that to suggesting for suggesting this topic. Uh, can you see my whiteboard, everybody, that I'm sharing? Yes. Okay. So last time I realized there were some recording issues. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get started. Okay. So this is the next friends to friends meeting. Like we always do, what we will try and do is target the topic. Today's topic is the shame trap. Uh, we, will we will target this topic from a very pragmatic point of view. We will look at what psychologists have spoken about it. So there are two or three instances that I have collected from, from historical point of view. We will, we will quickly touch upon it and discuss it as a team. Uh, then maybe we do a small CBT demo on, on, on challenging uh, uh, shame resulting thoughts. If, if anybody wants to play that role. So we will, we will have a coach and a coachee. Uh, we will quickly touch upon a very small mindfulness impulse on this, trying not to go too philosophical because in this session we want to try and stick more pragmatic if we can. But And then it's always open to discussion across all of these topics. Yeah. So uh, before we begin, for me at least, for me it was very uh, crucial uh, to define what we are talking about. Right. So what is, what is shame? Uh, and uh, I was I was a little confused to be honest. Blame to my limited linguistic skill sets. I was a little confused between feeling ashamed versus feeling guilt, and where is the boundary and what it means to uh, address each of it. Right? Because for guilt, for me, is a complete different topic. So um, I stumbled. Is. Yes. So I stumbled upon an answer which I think is a premise which I want to bring on with all of you so that we are all on the same page in terms of discussing the same thing. Yeah. So guilt okay. is. Uh, for me that I did something wrong and I'm ruminating around it. So I did it's, it's I'm done with it. Right? That's, there's something wrong that I did and I am feeling guilty for it. Shame on the other hand is a different spe spectrum, which says there is something wrong with me. Maybe I've not done something wrong. That's not the bigger premise, but there is something wrong with me. It could be that my hairstyle today sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm feeling ashamed of my hairstyle, right? It could be as simple as that. So shame, is something that is wrong with me. And, and there are a lot of reasons of, of looking at it. Uh, but guilt is something that I did wrong. And in today's session, I think we are trying to discuss the feeling of shame, which is uh, there is something wrong with me. Is this premise acceptable to all? Any, any other definitions that anybody thinks around shame that they want to call out differently? I think it uh, it uh, talk, it talks about something very important. How shame is about us, and guilt is about what we did. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, then I think let's quickly get started. We touch upon some of the the prior arts. So we 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 will land up doing this exercise maybe as part of CBT, but we will see. So. Uh, what we have from Tori Higgins is a self discrepancy theory of, of course, Tori Higgins and then many uh, build up on top of it. And he says there is a very quick way of identifying the, the um, uh, pointers of where the shame is arising from, right? So he's asking everybody to do, uh, what he's asking everybody to do is make three lists, right? Make a first list of a person you think you actually are, right? So wh who am I? H what kind of person am I? Write down all the things over there. Right. Then the second aspect, what he's trying to uh, talk about is what is the kind of person you ought to be right to enable meet your sense of duty, obligation, responsibility, you as a person, as a part of social um, uh, uh, landscape, what you are the characteristics or what is the kind of person you, sh you ought to be. Right. So write those things down and create a third list, which is very idealistic, right? Somebody whom you uh, idealize hope and, and, and see that that is the zenith of where you could reach as a person. So we, we, we will touch upon this maybe quickly in CBT exercise if time permits, but what he tells us that this already sets the premise of the conflict, which is uh, in the roots um, or at least in one, one of the very strong roots for the shame that when, when I call out what I am versus why, what I ought to be, especially from that responsibility, the third angle comes later from a responsibility state point. Um, that difference is something which already 
uh, builds a factor of shame for me. Yeah. So this this uh, duality of where I am and where I should be, the big the process of becoming rather than being, is the premise, the first premise of introducing uh, the aspects of shame, for example. Yeah. Any quick thoughts from your personal experiences on this? Do you do you see or do you see this as something which is there as a fundamental differentiator, the discrepancy, the conflict where where you have seen people having shame or you yourself addressing into shame? Do you want to share anything at this point on, on this topic? No, okay, then I think we will we will try to target this as a part of our yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. um, I think it makes sense with respect to what when you say that a person who you think you actually are mm -hmm. and the person you think you ought to be. And and I believe the keywords over here are think mm -hmm. because how I perceive myself is different from how somebody else perceives me. So let's say I'm a little overweight. Yes. So I perceive that as a gross uh, deviation from how I ought to be. Ought to be, yes. Yeah. And that makes me ashamed when I, let's say, go and try on clothes in a mall, right? Yes, yes. But for somebody who knows me very well, let's say my husband, mm -hmm. he has, he doesn't see that differentiation. He doesn't yes. say that I see you like this and you're like this and yes. I am not liking you or something like that. You know, it's, it's different. Yes. So I believe shame is very, very, uh, what do you say? It, it, it comes within. It's very... It's inner facing, for example. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and the differentiation is definitely... The more the deviation between what I think I am and what I think I should be is the more the shame I have. Yes, yes. But there is a very important point you brought up. There is one aspect definitely of uh, inner looking shame. Yeah. But there is an aspect of outer looking shame and we'll touch upon that um, from, from what psychologists have at least called out. Yeah, Pilar, you wanted to say something. Um, the thought now comes to, are we taught to feel ashamed? And I'm, I'm thinking about this very old uh, documentary of some island in the Pacific where the women were quite robust, to say it somehow, and they all felt sexy and, and the men were crazy about them. Mm. And then television came mm. and they played Melrose Place <laughs> where they had this uh, Heather Lockler who is like 45 kilos or something. And depression came upon these women that they, they there was no way they could match that standard and shame came in and the interesting thing here is that the the same feminist that made the documentary on these women i'm trying to think about the name of it came afterward and and tried to understand how women could w learn to be ashamed yeah. even though if by culture mm. they were taught to be proud of proud themselves, of themselves. Mm. so uh, and and I really, I mean, the same lane as the doctor. I mean, my husband doesn't seem to have a problem. For my husband, I'm his wife, I have his child. It's For him, it's natural. But for me, it's an issue. And it's a learned issue of how I should feel with myself. Yeah. And and, and that's uh, where I'm, I'm sitting. That the expectation that I have is an imposed expectation. It's yeah. not health. Yeah. is not maybe um i don't know a, a shade of lipstick it's yeah. you are wrong because you do not fit yeah and therefore you you should you have to feel ashamed uh because you don't look the way we want you to look mm. even though you eat what we want you to eat it's quite a contradiction there yeah but let's call it there because there's a lot in between yes yes absolutely and the, the point really, again, is right. See, one angle is very, very internal versus the second angle. We are already thinking whether it has been imposed, whether it's learned uh, thing, right? Uh, absolutely. But again, from, from a perspective of, um, no, but let's not get there. Okay. So we, we let's, let's continue. Um, if no other comments, we will quickly go to the next, um, the, the self-awareness theory or the self-awareness trap. Uh, that Robert had started and again many people picked on it and this is this is very uh, in, uh, interesting right because 
uh, when it comes to shame uh, for that matter there has to be some aspect where the self awareness come into picture which means we are looking at ourselves right irrespective of whether we like what we are looking at ourselves or not right i mean that what we are looking at that's a different story but uh, the, from from uh, from the prior art of this theory what it talks about is that uh, in our day to day activity when you are doing your job when you are learning when you are playing when you are sleeping etc etc you know there is a most of for most of the people the amount of time that a person spends to for being self aware to look at the person's own self is very less in our day to day life while doing our da daily uh, chores we don't look at ourselves enough anyways right so first what that they were trying to bring is that the self awareness part of looking at ourselves itself is very less and from there in a very limited spectrum of what we are and what we should be there is a huge amount of shame and for that matter a lot of other um uh, cognitive uh, issues that come in right so having that in our mind let's start with even with that less self awareness what is what happens right so either you are a self focusing person or you come across a self focusing situation a self focusing situation is generally negative rather than positive right something goes wrong in your life um, you fall ill uh, there is a big failure that comes across your way boom you really come into context of self awareness you start looking at yourself yeah when there is huge success when there is huge um uh, enjoyment when there is huge celebration uh, in and around you very less people actually step back and look what's happening inside yeah so more, majorly the self focusing situations are unfortunately uh, negative is what they tell uh, now this when it comes into the context of self awareness the third box now we have the accessibility of self discrepancies so as we spoke about within that self awareness spectrum we now talk, start thinking about what should be and where we are right this is the this is the gap the duality that starts building up and it's very interesting to see this because psychologists don't talk about um or maybe they have but at least in this context where i read they don't talk only about okay the state where we are they don't stop there at all and most of the humans don't do we don't do that as well right immediately in the seed of what we know where we are we have a tree that comes out which tells where we should be so it's a duality principle and and why I, why i come to that is that's my build, that's that's something that I, I puts on my neurons on fire right and then we'll cover that in a uh, mindfulness impulse so for example if i have if i have anger i already talk about being calm right for example if i am shameful about my weight i already talk about being at a certain weight and put a target a dot on the horizon where i should be right so there is already this two state of where i am and where i should be right uh, in uh, immediately after the self awareness and one may argue that self awareness is actually only about knowing where you are but the discrepancy then sets in and then there is obviously a very common thing we know the expectation so we now talk about uh, can this discrepancy be reduced right so can i get into that 45 kg weight zone yes or no right and then it is shape up or ship out ship out right so shape up as in you work towards reducing that uh, discrepancy ship out is no i want a tub of ice cream this is all, i will never be able to achieve this let me get out of it right so i try try to distract myself out of this entire zone of discrepancy right so not being self aware enough uh then there are persons uh, who are self aware so inner looking situations which go into awareness awareness tells us where i am immediately a discrepancy of duality which says where i should be evaluation of these two and then ship out or ship up right this is the entire movement and this is the trap where we are right so why we call it as trap is uh for for many many of us it seems that this self discrepancy uh finding in itself is a very painful situation right uh, for example uh, pilar as you mentioned the 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 women on that island right for them that self awareness of the discrepancy found was a very painful state if they were not aware about it it was all good life was awesome yeah so even in modern world where we try to be self aware 
is a very pain, painful activity and more often than not either we will distract or go into something else uh, is is a situation where we are facing this uh, discrepancy yeah and that is what something that we are uh, not uh, looking at yeah so this is this is at a very high level uh, the the movement of of the uh, self awareness uh, with respect to shame that builds up when we are from in, at a discrepancy level where we are either not ready to shape up or we feel no it cannot be shaped up at all yeah so this is this is the entire this is the entire movement and from this maybe we go already so uh, guys feel free to step in uh, pitch in whenever you want to add anything to any of these topics being spoken yeah okay so maybe we jump into the next part so this is what we were talking about right so from the self awareness part there are there are two sides of the self uh, one for you and one for me right so i have my we always talk about this that when two people meet actually six people are meeting right the two people who are meeting as persona the one that i am for myself and one that i want to project for you right so there are when two people meet there are actually six personalities missing yeah so yeah two sides of self one for you and one for me the first part is talking about private self consciousness right which means i'm introspective i'm looking within myself and the public self consciousness which means i look at myself as an entity of a social setup not separate from it right so i look at, look at myself from from an entire angle of a social objects uh, as seen by others as well right so this are these are the two angles uh, that we look at and depending on where, which side of your consciousness is high either you are inward looking or outward looking in terms of retrospecting inspecting the discrepancies that you have in your becoming process of the duality yeah um the, uh, very interesting experiments have have been done here right hello been time kids come uh, a, a jar of chocolates have been kept outside the door is closed and and the person tells them everybody please pick up one chocolate not more than it and you can leave and the person shuts the door and almost 30 to 40% of kids actually take more than one yeah now in the second experiment you have a um, large size mirror placed placed besides uh, the chocolate uh, place yeah so when somebody is going to pick a chocolate he, he or she can see themselves you know it reduces to as low as 10 to 12% as low as 10 to 12% yeah and that just calls out it's not about kids it's also about us right where when we know um there is an awareness from a perspective of either people are looking at me or i am looking at myself i'm aware as of now in what i'm doing um i may i uh, the, the the wrong doing or the things that i'm conflicting with uh, there are very less chances i'll do it right Uh, i have had so many friends who would talk about uh, that they want to do certain things like i want to do bungee jumping i want to do this i want to do that and it's conflicting with my theory let me get drunk and then i'll do it you know that's it's the easiest way out right let me get drunk and i'll do it why i mean that's that's the the mirror is gone yeah now i can take five chocolates is the same theory we are still the same kids the chocolates are the same things in absence of mirror and without absence and uh, in absence of mirror or with mirror our entire approach changes and that is where we, we either we are looking at ourselves or we are looking at others looking at us and our entire definition of awareness and with it the discrepancies and the dualities and the shame completely shifts yeah so yeah this is this is what uh, we had i think yeah from from the two or three psychology examples that i had with me um and then then we can jump into our cbt etc later but yeah let's let's hear about it right i mean from whatever you have seen what other other things that you have heard about around this uh, uh, things your personal experiences yeah time time for open discussion around this topic <laughs> 